Hello and welcome to Universe Mode. This is NXT. We are back in Full Sail University. Removed from NXT TakeOver and wow, what a night of action it was. Let's tell the truth. It was a very entertaining and outstanding night that NXT put on and with the spectacle that it was so many other people so many talents from around the world have staked their name and have wanted in on one of the hardest new things out there today so we will be seeing four debuts here tonight which will be interesting including in the main event Chris Sabin who lost his rematch to Kazuchika Okada for the NXT championship is enraged with himself is just completely and utterly distraught by the outcome and has demanded that any of these new debutants come out here and face Sabin in the main event of the evening here tonight. Sabin wanted to try and get right back up to that top echelon without even thinking about the bump he has taken courtesy of TakeOver. And of course you want to talk about bumps, you want to talk about TakeOver as well, you talk about what mainly people, what people were calling the match of the night. The winner of that one, Corin. We will be hearing from him here tonight in regards to what is next for this man, what he has in mind, potentially uh, his performance against Stone Cold. We do not truly know what Corin is going to say, but we will find out later on tonight. But before all that, we are going to get things underway with a debut. I am very interested to see some of the new talents who have made their debuts. I do not know who is who, but I can confirm that... Uh, Jack Swagger isn't the debuting name. We don't have to worry about that. We're going to be sitting here going, Oh my goodness, Jack Swagger's debuted in NXT. Don't worry. We're okay. <laughs> Jack Swagger, anyway, heads towards the ring. And this is all a part of NXT's new uh, attack, really. On not wanting to be shown as a developmental brand. Not wanting to be shown as a, you know, a, a weak brand. NXT is now firmly putting its staple out there as the fourth brand of this universe. And so it has done, and the best way it knows how, through some working done by the NXT general manager, well, the co-general managers, JBL and Zabisco, we can announce now tonight, this will be the first NXT to have, like all the other shows, a five-match card, and we'll continue to have that each and every week from here on out. It's going to be a lot of action for you to follow, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you don't follow it, but NXT is now putting its foot in the door and saying that it is ready to become a firm challenger. What better way to try and do with some new talent as we are seeing here. Whenever he makes his arrival. I think I know who it is from this theme. Yep, I know. There he is. Straight from the United Kingdom. The young prodigy, you could say, that is Tyler Bate. Finally making his debut in this universe. What a time this is for Bate. And this is a, a real case of America versus... Uh, the United Kingdom, but Tyler Bates here, youngster, 20 years old, I believe, maybe even 19 years old. And it seems as if Jack Swagger is not best impressed by his debut. As we can see in the ring, Swagger just kind of getting a little bit uh, overconfident, really, and now starting to do push-ups in the ring. This is very much unlike uh, Jack Swagger, but Bates going to make his debut here the way he knows how. He's going to go straight for Swagger, and oh, leaping clothesline. Welcome to NXT, Tyler Bate, and he's going to take the fight right now to uh, Jack Swagger. I'd love to talk about what matches there are on tonight, but we only know, well, we know the opponents in some of them, but we don't know, you know, the, the full match in three out of the other four matches we have here tonight, because up next, I believe we have the only um, match we know about, if that serves me correct. I believe that is the case. We have um, uh, EC3 who was, uh, technically speaking, last eliminated in the um, NXT Global Championship Battle Royal, courtesy of Bret Hart, and that is the man he will be facing here tonight. Bret the Hitman Hart, the, of course, the new Global Champion. Let's see how he will square off in his first performance with that belt, and let's see how that belt looks around his waist. Then we're going to have a tag team matchup. It is going to be the team of um, Shelton Benjamin. And Kurt Angle taking on a newly debuted team as well. Picked up off the indie circuit. So you can see, despite the uh, universe having a tendency to make its own tag teams and we see teams being formed within this universe itself, that has certainly not been the case as we pick up another hot team fresh off of the indie circuit. And on top of that, then we have the women's division. It will be, I believe it's Beth Phoenix squaring off against the new debuting woman. Uh, that'll be an interesting one. And then... 
of course, uh, Chris Sabin. Rather than you know having someone chosen for him, he is calling out anyone back there who is making their debut to challenge him here tonight. Admirable, you could say, but we'll see how that will ha how that will pan out for Chris Sabin. And then, of course, at some point in the night, we will be hearing from Corin. But there is the uh, the airplane spin by Tyler Bate into the finishing move. Tyler Driver, Some, I believe there's 97 on the end of that, but for now we're just going to call it Tyler Driver. He nails it on Swagger, there's the cover, and there's a quick win in his debut for Tyler Bate. Made an absolute piece of work of that one. Relatively easy as well, it seems, for the youngster. Welcome to NXT, Tyler Bate, and, well, that is one, you know, one incredible wrestler to add to its forte. One I am very much so looking forward to. NXT has picked up five new talents. Well, six technically because it goes to the tag team. And we will be seeing one other man debuting next week. Which should be a very interesting affair. And I wonder if the rosters have taken this opportunity and decided let's send a few people down as well. If I was SmackDown, I think I'd look to send a few people down following TakeOver and see if they can develop themselves. But nevertheless, great win there for Tyler Bate. Welcome to NXT. And let's see what kind of... Uh, history or let's see what kind of um, um, legacy the youngster can leave behind as the prodigy he truly is I believe of NXT well let's move on now not going to be a debut this time around it is going to be a match between two NXT superstars we already know EC3 and the global champion Bret the Hitman Hart well here comes one of the men eliminated last within this matchup. Perhaps even last within that battle royal. You know, because him and Rich Swan were chucked over the top rope at the same time. While EC3 was looking to eliminate Swan and leave it down to him and Bret Hart. But uh, that was not the case. So the frustration for EC3 there must be brewing. Due to what transpired. But here tonight EC3 will become the first man to take on Bret Hart since the events of TakeOver. And of course, the first man to take on Bret Hart since he won that global championship. Can EC3 get a win out of uh, out of this? Can he, can he put himself right in the firing line for the uh, NXT global championship? Maybe. We will find out. But uh, it is certainly a strong choice, i got to say, with um, in regards to NXT for who they picked as their first choice. I'm oh, sorry, for who they for who they have as their first NXT Global Champion, I should say. I blanked out a little bit when saying that one. It was, uh, I think Bret Hart is a very, you know, if you want someone to bring prestige to that belt, I think Bret Hart can achieve just that. And that is what he is here to do in NXT at this point. You know, he was originally frustrated he got sent down here, but with now, I would say him actually being a help and making it no longer a fourth brand, uh, no longer a developmental brand, but the fourth brand of this universe. It is certainly, um, assisted them into uh, you know, making the global championship a stronger belt and now we're about to see how it looks the only champion coming out here tonight of course so let's see how he looks with that NXT global championship around his waist wherever he may be there he is and that is a very very nice looking belt you gotta give credit where credit's due to the people who created that championship well done to them it's a Lovely looking belt, and now Bret Hart is the first man to wear it around his waist. Well, maybe there's a you know maybe there's a bit of a importance when you're the first champion. And certainly, Bret Hart may want to hope that he doesn't come out the you know when it comes to being a first champion that he doesn't come out the same way that uh, Nikki Cross did when she was the first NXT Women's Champion, and that the fact that she lost it within a, a few weeks of holding it. But with all this new talent arriving, I'd keep my eye out if I was Bret the Hitman Hart. Because it may very well be the case that uh, he could lose that belt sooner rather than later. Here goes Bret the Hitman Hart now. Irish whip onto EC3, getting off to a quick and effective start. But EC3 having none of that. One half of the longest reigning ECW Tag Team Champions of all time. Coming in at a nifty 210 days, I believe, so not bad at all. And now here goes 
between these two men. Who can pick up a win? Who can build momentum in this post-takeover show? Look at the strength there of EC3 as he just lumbers Bret Hart around. Throwing him from corner to corner. Throwing him all around the ring even. Like he wasn't even uh, all that heavy. And now look at this. Look at how cocky and confident EC3 is getting. Good punch in the gut there. Bret Hart looking to try and respond. Of course, since he's arrived to NXT as well, Bret Hart has somewhat abandoned his more technical wrestling aspects that helped to make him so um, kind of respected in a way. And we've seen him a lot more utilizing anything he can to get a win. You know, sometimes exposing the turnbuckle maybe. Maybe, you know, the low blows that we see rapidly. Just anything Bret can use to his advantage, he has done. Brett waiting by the corner there. Just kind of brought EC3 into that one. And now there's an example of it. Brett using the ropes there to his advantage. Hardly the respectable acts of the uh, Brett Hart that is a, is a former world heavyweight champion. But I don't think that matters to Brett anymore. Oh, nice uppercut there though by Brett. Just kind of backing up for a moment, allowing EC3 up to his feet so Brett can plan out what he wants to do next. And that was exactly what he wanted. Backbreaker there, try and wear down the very strong back of EC3. So it makes the application of that sharpshooter just that bit more easier. And can cause even more pain to the back where it counts. EC3 continues to fight here, but it's a good counter by Brett now. And uh oh, atomic, <coughs> atomic drop. By EC3, but uh, uh, sorry, by Bret Hart even, but EC3 is quick to counter. And now EC3 back on the offense. Back and forth between these two men thus far. Good sit-out power bomb, and that may give EC3 some breathing room. Well, that certainly will as Bret Hart goes to the outside, but only temporarily. This isn't going to look good. EC3 on that steel barricade. Oh, his gut dumped into it. They say uh, every time someone slammed into it, that padding up there, that, you know, that little banners that we've got over the NXT. Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, there's the, the referee was actually not even paying attention to that one. Low blow by Brett. Looking for the sharpshooter though, but EC3. Maybe he was thinking tactical. Maybe he had some padding on down there. I don't know, but whatever it was, smart thinking by EC3. And he's able to get back in this one. He may just be a front. He may be in extreme pain right now, and he's just looking to fight through it. Brett now, crucifix, roll up, desperation setting, and maybe to get this win, but EC3's out of two. Brett up top, double axe handle, and down goes EC3. Good leg drop as well. Brett, for the most part, has been in control of this matchup. But as I say that, the tides turn there with EC3 hitting a very nice clothesline. And EC3 now in position. Will he look for the one percenter? Will he look to try and drill Brett Hart down and pick up a huge win here? One percenter by EC3. But he's not done yet. EC3 getting only fired up right now as we saw by there. How will he go about it? The double, uh, clobbering double axe handle blows. And he is going right for Bret Hart right now. Power slam. And EC3 is feeling it. Oh, knee right in the skull there. Well, in the back of the skull. Digging the face into the mat. And Bret Hart is busted open. And EC3 is capitalizing on it, much to the enjoyment of this full sale crowd. But Bret Hart is quick to slow down the pace, back down to how he wants it to go. Oh no, not for much longer. There it is, one percenter. Well, that may do it. There's two and there's three. EC3 is your winner. Well, well, well. There you have it. What a uh, unfortunate turn of events for Bret the Hitman Hart. Last week he was global champion and celebrating that win. 
and tonight EC3 turns the table on that and decides that he wants to stick his name out there. He wants to be the first man to challenge against Brett the Hitman Hart for that global championship. I'm all for it. I'm all for this. This is going to be a very entertaining road to say the least. So that being said, congratulations to EC3 on the win. And uh, Bret Hart is hes going to have to think this one back through, I think. But uh, before all that, we're going to move on to our next matchup. Shelton Benjamin and Kurt Angle taking on a new team. Let's find out who it is. This one in its own right is going to be a little bit of an interesting one because um, at the Royal... Uh, whoa, that's definitely not... Uh, uh, last week at NXT TakeOver... Benjamin and Angle started numbers one and two in that matchup, and they kept on going back and forth with one another. They seemed to not be an allegiance between the two, and I'm not too sure if that was because of, um, you know, if that was the, uh, the the case of just wanting to win that title, or if it was just, you know, maybe it was just a case of those two both wanted to win the title, and they realized only one of them was going to be able to get it, but um, it just seemed a little bit off. But maybe that is still the, uh, the singles match, kind of not really greed, but the mindset that takes over you. You know, you want to achieve, you want to get that win, you want to do whatever it takes to be victorious. And I think that was exactly what both those men wanted. They both had a hunger for gold. Hopefully they can put that behind them here tonight and work together to take on this new team that's making its debut. Once again, it's another hot team off the indie circuit to... Trying to think of who they could be on the indie circuit right now, and I'm not going to try and allude to too many because I don't want to try and spoil it. But, um, yeah, I mean, could be anyone. But we'll find out in a matter of moments anyway after Kurt Angle's finished making his entrance. Nice Team Angle Jack and Singlet on here tonight. A little bit self confident, but it's, uh, it's nice. I dig it. Hopefully, these two men can perhaps find a little bit more unity to each other and start picking up some wins as time goes on. I can only imagine what it'd be like when these teams, when this team squares off against American Alpha, which I, I believe they may have actually done. No, they didn't do it. They didn't square off in the past, which is a little bit of a shame, but you know, these things happen. So let's find out who is on their way to make their debut in NXT. Oh, that's who it is. Well, well, well. I mean, they weren't lying when they said it was a, a, a hot team off the indie circuit. Raymond Rowe on the left, Hansen on the right. War Machine has officially arrived to NXT. Now I know. I, I know this universe is usually, you know, some, it's sometimes a place where you see teams forming, as you're seeing right here with Benjamin and Angle, as you see with, you know, the uh, Rated R show, the Broken Kings, even on NXT itself. But... Uh, this is a team that we have picked up independently, literally. We have, picked, we have picked them up on the independent circuit, and we've uh, picked them up truly because of the fact that they can add so much leverage to this NXT tag team division and truly give it the facelift, I think, that it needs to prove up to the likes of... Well, to prove maybe it's the best tag team division, because right now I would argue it's maybe SmackDown's... Uh, maybe ECW's is first. I don't know. There's a... The tag team division in this universe is kind of lacking a little bit. It just comes to be, it seems to just be an upper echelon and then, and then that's kind of it. You know, you've got the upper echelon and then you've got the rest, which is what NXT is trying to make sure it doesn't do. Here we go, we're going to get things underway now. Raymond Rowe and Shelton Benjamin, and Benjamin not best pleased with the arrival of War Machine. Trying to spoil their debut here. As you'd uh, maybe expect out of the gold standard, but right away, Raymond Rowe now going to get off to an emphatic start. Back suplex there for Benjamin. And already, here comes the big guy. Here comes the tank of the team. Hansen in. Raymond Rowe knocking Benjamin down just as he got in. And Benjamin actually getting a little bit of a breathing room. He gets back up to his feet. What will Hansen do here? He'll do exactly this. Oh, Samoan drop. By the easily 300 plus pounder. Uh oh. And now a headbutt as well. That hard head coming driving down on you. War Machine versus the DCC. I'm already just imagining how that could pan out to be. That would certainly be a um, one hell of a matchup, I believe. 
It's amazing to see just a night before the Great American Bash, NXT doing so much to try and get their name out there, to try and prove that they are, re they are here to make a statement, despite the pay-per-view coming up just tomorrow. This is going to be a harsh lander for Benjamin now. Oh, another leg breaker there. Or shin breaker even. Oh, he's gone, Magma! He's gone, Magma! Magma. Benjamin, can he get out of it? He looks to be getting out of it gradually. Took him some time, but there we go. Benjamin breaks the hold and sends Hansen back into the turnbuckle. Tag made now. In comes Kurt Angle. This is looking good. Great strength being demonstrated by Benjamin there. And oh, what a double team! I mean, the athleticism there by Angle. We know he can do something like a moonsault, and we can do some great stuff in that ring, but sometimes leaping up to deliver a kick in the back of the head like that, not something you always see. Oh, well, that didn't pan up the way Angle wanted it to. He's been Irish in the corner, and oh, oh my goodness. Look at the strength there of Hansen, just driving those blows into Kurt Angle. But look at how smart Kurt Angle is there. The three eyes certainly helping him out with that one. Targeting the leg now of Hansen, trying to take away the base to this big man. And the more he does of that, the easier it may be to lock in the ankle lock. No way. Deadlift German suplex by Angle. Outstanding. But it only manages a one count. That takes a special kind of strength to pull something like that off. That is pound for pound strength being demonstrated right there. Whereas Hansen is just brute force being thrown at you. Here we go. Tiger Bomb backbreaker. Oh, double underhook backbreaker even I think is the correct term for it. That is pure strength in its own right. Kicking the leg though by Angle. War Machine certainly had a uh, tough team thrown at them to start things off. And Angle wants Rowe back in the ring here. And he'll get exactly that. Raymond Rowe tagged back in. Kurt Angle now throws them both into each other. What is Angle going to do here? Forcing War Machine to collide. Kurt Angle such a smart competitor within those ropes. He knows exactly what to do and when to do it. He wanted the fresh row in just so he could wear down ha um, Hansen a little bit more. He didn't have to use too much of his own energy to do it as well. Raymond Rowe now, though, going after the leg of Angle. Look at this, constantly sitting him up to deliver something. That I like to see. He's just going to use his strength to do a deadlift suplex. Nope, that's counted. Angle with a suplex of his own now. Quick to get, well, uh, tried his quickest to get back up to his feet, but he's rushing up to that top rope. Kurt Angle going to fly here, but Raymond Rowe is up to his feet. Angle flies crossbody, but he definitely didn't nail all of that. I think Rowe got his hands out in time to block that one. But it's Angle who's back up to his feet first. Into the corner now. Going to be another tag made here into Benjamin. Yes. Here we go, tag made. Double back, oh, double backdrop there. Nicely done, and you can certainly see that just kind of how difficult the NXT Tag Team Division is. War Machine. I'm not saying they're making a weak debut by any means, but I'm saying that, you know, this is kind of the, the division that you have to break into, and this is not exactly a team who's rated number one contender right now either. And this is the fight they're delivering. What a spine buster by Rowe. Uh-oh. If memory serves me correct, I think, I think Benjamin just picked the worst possible time to tag in. Here we go. Handsome the legal man. Oh, good God. Here it comes. Back suplex. And then Hansen with the leg drop. Absolutely outstanding strength. Phenomenal strength being put. Oh, and Raymond Rowe actually broke that one up, I think. I don't know if he, was, if he intentionally meant to do that, but Hansen going to continue it on here. Oh, my God. Showed, uh, uh, yeah, a... a um, a gut wrench, I suppose? No, something else. I I'm th I'm, can't think of it right now. Lost in the moment. Uh, Hansen now with a power bomb. And he's not done yet. Shelton Benjamin just taking receiving punishment after punishment. And he may be on his way for another one of these. Tag made. Let's swap the rolls around. Raymond Rowe now up top. And with the leg drop. A guillotine leg drop. That should finish it all. Cover here. In comes, and again, they, they collide, and for some reason, the, the pin is broken up. I, I, th I would have thought Rowan Hansen would be a little bit stronger than this. 
It's not like he's making a huge collision with him. And it's not like Angle's getting in anywhere to break up that pin either, so I'm not too sure. Oh, Benjamin now resorting to a little bit more desperate tactics now that Angle can't be seen. Roll up here by Benjamin. Can he spoil the debut for War Machine? No, it's a very early kick out there by Raymond Rowe. That was Benjamin. I'd like to get out of this ring right now. I've taken a lot of punishment, and he's going right back into the corner instead. They're not going to give him a third, are they? No. Nope. It's actually going to be a tag this time around. Kick in the gut. Hansen, I think, needs to finish this match up right now. Needs to put this one to bed. A collision between the two men in the pinfalls for whatever reason just seems a little bit dumb. And you'd expect from a team that has such expertise and such, uh, you know, such a, a well-versed level of experience on the independent circuit you'd expect a little bit better out of them in that aspect but there's a top rope double underhook superplex and now what will Hansen go for he's going to go for the leg sensible Benjamin using his strength there though to hoof him over and wants to make the tag into Angle now and finally does get it despite Angle's back being turned Benjamin can finally get out of the ring but Angle may have to fight the rest of this matchup on his own after what his tag team partner's gone through. Oh my god, look at the strength there of Angle. Explode a suplex in the corner. I think what has happened is, you know, with a, a lot of, a lot of, you know, with especially Tyler Bate earlier in the night, he was able to use his momentum and certainly use his opponent as well to his advantage. That hasn't been the case here for a war machine. Angle and Benjamin have not been phased by it. And therefore, it's been a bit more difficult to make this debut a success. Cover here now on Angle. Will he kick out? What is Hansen's problem? Genuinely, why was he getting all gropey and shit? Just get out the ring, you dipstick. Raymond Rowe now throws him into another corner. Hansen's having a bit of a mope against the ropes right now, and as he should. It's a very bad thing he did. Benjamin wasn't even ready to get in the ring to help out his tag team partner there anyway, so it wasn't as if it was going to be a troubling time for War Machine. They could have secured that three count, maybe. Right now, though, this is smart by Rowe, wrenching on the surgically repaired neck of Kurt Angle. Wrenching on it successfully as well to wear him down. Quick cover here on Angle. There's one. Managing two out of it and nothing more. Angle forces his way out. Benjamin seems to be making a recovery on the outside. Same can't be said for Hansen right now, though. What more will War Machine look to do here? You can see a lot of keeping Angle down on the ground, but that isn't really the best plan of action against Kurt Angle. He is, you know, he is an Olympic gold medalist in wrestling, to be fair, so keeping him on the ground just kind of benefits him. Uh-oh, will Angle get a taste of it now? No, he's turned... Oh, okay, for whatever reason, Raymond Rowe just decided, oh, let's just get rid of... Uh, he's really got a fetish right now with... Sheldon Benjamin, for whatever reason, he was just constantly trying to grab him there. There's another spine buster by Rowe. Will he go for the cover? No, I, I would have personally. Into the corner now, but Hansen doesn't look ready to make the tag, so... What is with this random timing from War Machine? Generally, they've been thrown away this match now on about four occasions. And there's Angle with a crossbody once more being able to fight back. Well, it's a good thing that this could still be viewed as a developmental brand because War Machine made one incredible mistake. They gave Angle breathing room, and this may be it. It is War Machine's debut spoiled. Angle and Benjamin are going to claim the win instead. They've got no one to blame but themselves, truth be told. Two guillotine leg, you know, two back suplex guillotine leg drop combinations, a double team... Power bomb, you know, that entire deadlift combo basically Hansen executed. No and um, no pins on some occasions. And when there were pins, for whatever reason they broke them up themselves. It made no sense. It was it was dumb and they cost themselves that matchup. Certainly, War Machine had all the momentum coming in to make a strong debut. And truth be told, they blew it. They've got no one else left to blame but themselves. But nevertheless, we have one last uh, debut. No, sorry, we have two debuts left on this show. Um, 
Coming up next, we have the um, the women's debut of the night. It's going to be Beth Phoenix going one on one against this uh, newly signed woman. Let's find out who it is. Okay, so let's hope for this newly debuting woman's sake they don't blow it like uh, War Machine just blew their debut. That was. Uh, not at all the debut the, that uh, Raymond Rowe and Hanson wanted, and they only have themselves to blame in that aspect. Sometimes you just gotta take the uh, the blame when you should, and that is exactly what um, Raymond Rowe and Hanson should do. They need to go back to the drawing board, and hopefully for NXT's sake, they're not a signing they're gonna learn to regret rather quickly, and they're a signing that uh, will get better the next time we see them. Maybe a little trip to the Performance Center will do them fine. Well, that being said, Beth Phoenix kind of soaking in the confidence right now, soaking in the reaction out of the crowd. Let's see who she's facing. Let's see who her opponent is. I'm excited. I've never heard this theme in my life. I have no idea who this is. I have no idea who that is. I'm assuming this is, well, there we go. Her name's Ruby Riot, and NXT has been working on trying to get some new graduates up, some of their own trained superstars, and we're seeing it right there. In Ruby Riot. To me, to my knowledge, I don't have I don't have any notes on her on the indie circuit. If there was, it was probably some very very indie circuit, and she's been brought in and trained by those uh, down in the uh, top of the line performance center that we have. And well, now here's Ruby Riot. Let's see how she does in her debut against Beth Phoenix. Certainly an addition that the NXT Women's Division needs, and certainly one who kind of possesses, kind of looks like. What the NXT Women's Champion, uh, I would imagine, is like on the inside. That's the best way of um, describing Ruby Riot upon first impressions. But maybe that's what will make her a perfect opponent for Nikki Cross. We'll find out. But here we go. Beth Phoenix and uh, Riot into a collar and elbow tie-up here to get things underway. Last time Beth Phoenix was on NXT, she picked up a victory. But for whatever reason, she wasn't booked again by the NXT committee and well, the NXT co-general managers. And... That's something I'm not too sure about, but look at how she's using her size and her strength here to overpower Ruby Riot. Cheap shot at her the first time round, but she's going to give her a clean break out of the corner. Who would have expected that? And here we go now. Beth Phoenix unloading away with some quick strikes here to get us underway. Chopping the chest of Ruby Riot off the ropes now. For this, uh, well, I would, I would assume, not really well, kind of anti Establishment, yeah, really anti-establishment chick that she is. Kind of a, looks like a, well, from her entrance as well, I would assume some kind of punk rocker. I mean, she is like uh, Corin to me, only Corin really, really is frightening. And I would assume if we're going to hear from him as well in regards to Corin, we haven't heard from him here tonight. I've been waiting, been holding off saying it could be Corin up next because we never know. But I would assume he's going to show up in a moment, right after this matchup. I would uh, take a guess and say, but maybe he was just rusing us all, and maybe he won't show up this week. Who knows, but um, right now we focus on this matchup. Beth Phoenix, got Ruby Riot, sit out, spine buster there. Nicely done for Beth Phoenix, who's now putting the boots onto Riot. Trying to not let a debut spoil her, uh, her time around you. Beth Phoenix trying to get next in line for that NXT Women's Championship, but got to get through Ruby Riot to kick that off before it can even begin. And Riot now. It was a snapmare and a neck crank. Good combo. Sitting up Beth Phoenix here. She's, she's not got the uh, the height that Beth Phoenix has, or maybe the strength that she does. But Well, maybe the, the, um, the body mass that she does, but she certainly showed it in her strength there with that deadlift suplex. And that, so long as it's on the ground... Beth Phoenix currently struggling to fight back. Able to pull out reversals here and there though. Down goes Ruby Riot now. And up top goes Beth Phoenix. Oh, well, up to the second rope anyway went Beth Phoenix. Nasty splash and... Well, she got a quick job there getting out of the ring. And oh, good God, that's not what you want, Beth Phoenix. Incredible strength being possessed there. Last ditch counter of that Hurricanrana. And down went Ruby Riot, and now Beth Phoenix can take control. Working on that back and that gut, I would assume. 
ahead of the glam slam, but really she's just going to work on the back right now, which isn't even somewhere where her opponent ends up. Of course, her opponent ends up slamming down on her gut. Ruby Riot, though, finally able to get a counter, and a strong one at that. Nice suplex there. But look at how quick Beth Phoenix is to pull out the reversal. But Ruby Riot does the same. Back and forth between these two women. Now, oh, what a forearm shot. Sends her down to the ground, and Riot straight into the cover there, but Beth Phoenix early to kick out. That uh, may have been the first pin of the match. Very hectic thus far between these two women. Riot sends Beth Phoenix into the turnbuckle here. How will, what will she look for? We're going to see some more uh, kind of outlandish offense. Well, she, she missed that, whatever she was looking for. And now she's going to go stomping on the chest now. Oh, certainly so of Beth Phoenix. He does a good job to get out of the way there. And now, well, that was only temporarily. She mistimed that a boot. And once more, Ruby Riot will look for whatever it is in the corner again. Turns her around, kicks her in the gut. Going to try and take this run up again. And this time, she misses it again. She might want to try and time that better ahead of next time. Or perhaps think of a new signature maneuver. Beth Phoenix now. Oh, wow. That was strength. Pure strength there. Just lifted her up in the air. She was nothing for that double-handed choke slam. Ruby Riot may have just lifted up the uh, the shoulder there or maybe Beth Phoenix again cocky couldn't see it from that camera angle Riot though with another reversal don't send her into the corner again Ruby is oh knee in the gut Ruby Riot now using her strength to her advantage cover now by Riot following that can she put away Beth Phoenix she gets two and oh two count Beth Phoenix did a good job of kicking out there, but she's not responsive right now. And that's going to give Ruby uh, Riot an invite to go up to the top rope here. She has taken a lot in this matchup, as you can see, and she needs to be quick with this before Beth Phoenix can recover. And that's... Ex no, wait, she's calling her up to her feet, maybe. Seems to be so, but Beth Phoenix isn't facing the right way. Maybe the Ruby Riot intended. Beth Phoenix face down in the mat right now, and certainly... Struggling to get back up to her feet. What will Ruby Riot look for here? Got her hooked in and oh! Eat defeat, basically. That is well and truly what it was. A sidewards eat defeat and it does the job. Ruby Riot makes it two to one for NXT debuts here tonight. Well, there we go. Welcome to NXT Ruby Riot and she took, a, she took quite the beating in that matchup. Uh, Beth Phoenix pulled out nearly all of the stops, except for that glam slam, but the fact that she didn't gave Ruby Riot the advantage she needed to pick up the win here. And perhaps prove that she, and, and, throw, and now throw her name in the hat for the NXT Women's Championship. Nikki Cross, got a hell of a lot of people coming through in just a short span of time already, it seems. But there we go. Ruby Riot makes her debut, and now another woman added to the uh, NXT Women's Division, and that's all the better for them. So now we're going to move on to our main event. Well, wondering when he was going to show up. Here he is. He's finally arrived. Man involved in a match of the night, arguably. At NXT TakeOver London, Corin is here, finally, with something to say in regards to TakeOver, maybe. We've waited nearly all night for this one. There's just one match left to go. So what have you, uh, what have you got for us in your mysterious voice that you do speak? Well, he's, um, I don't know if, I don't know about you, but from what he's saying... He's bigging himself up and putting Chris Sabin down a little. That's um, not really something you'd expect out of someone who was only brought in, who was brought in by Sabin, but certainly Corwin already developing an ego to himself. And look at that. E even after that five-star quality matchup he had with Austin, he doesn't even commend him as saying it was a, uh, you know, Austin was a great opponent. The confidence and the cockiness being executed here by Corwin is just, it's. 
slick almost. It's you want to hate him, but you, you're just struggling to. Mirror it at wow. He has set his claims already. One name out there for him, and it's Okada. You know, o Okada got Okada squared off against Corn before and been defeated. No one's been you know able to defeat Corn yet. No one's found his true weakness and. That may may indeed worry the way, the rainmaker even, and there's the final point. It doesn't matter if he's in the DCC. It doesn't matter if he's low if he's on a lone road. There is no one who can prevent Corin from, uh, you know, they're just delaying the inevitable. Should anyone get in his way, Corin's on his road to dominate NXT, and to truly become the ruler of this. <laughs> There was almost a, a chill in the arena following that from Corin. There's, there's kind of no real way of describing it. It just really was not a, a positive vibe when he came out. When he just started speaking, you just felt this arena get colder and colder. And the, the crowd just getting more and more silent. It, it truly is some kind of aura to Corin that we just don't know yet. And it's just weird. It's not even like it's like a cool weird or a good weird. It's just weird. That's the only way I can describe it. I'm not too sure if I like it either, but here comes the man who Corn effectively disrespected. The man who brought him into this universe, Chris Sabin. I don't know if Sabin heard those comments backstage, but if I, if he did, I don't imagine he's got too much. Uh, uh, to, you know, he's got too much excitement in him in regards to C and Corn whenever they do, whenever the DCC do one of their random whatever they do. But you've got to imagine Sabin is more than pissed off after what happened to TakeOver. You can see the way he's pacing, you can see the frustration in him as he waits the arrival of this last debut here in NXT here tonight. I am very much so interested to see who is going to challenge the former NXT champion. My oh my, did NXT strike big with this one. Hiroshi Tanahashi. Ha. Huh. That. That is one hell of a way to end a show. Tanahashi making his debut in this universe. My goodness. One of the, uh, the one of the, almost the, 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 the crowning figures of New Japan. And immediately Chris Sabin is trying to deface it. Think about all the, the, the names around you now who came from New Japan previously. You know, you got Nakamura on SmackDown who challenges for the Intercontinental Championship in the main event tomorrow. And then you got Okada and uh, Tanahashi here in NXT. Good God. Was NJP, uh, NJPW being a little bit ram-raided by the uh, actions of us recently? But, you know... Um, They'll, they'll be fine. They'll bounce back, I would assume. There's always some great talent out there. There's always great talent being made as well. But right now, Tanahashi had his debut spoiled. They had his moment to shine spoiled, courtesy of Chris Sabin. Sabin, and, uh, and you know, it's not really something to be surprised at. Sabin is just too annoyed right now and doesn't need Tanahashi here to try and spoil the party for him in any way, shape, or form. Spine buster there. Down goes Tanahashi. And right now, Sabin trying to stay in control here to start things off. Good counter there. And oh, Tanahashi not suplexing uh, his opponent like you see others do in that moment. Just right for a punch in the ribs. Here goes Tanahashi now. Looking to um, go after Chris Sabin here. How can Tanahashi make a statement on NXT in his first match against the, the, you know, the longest reigning NXT champion we've seen in this universe? Nice move there by Sabin. Sabin, I would assume, is also reeling in some kind of pain after what took place at um, TakeOver London. You know, there were moments when Sabin had that matchup won. There were moments he should have had that matchup won. He just let it slip by him and then fell, and then fell victim to the Rainmaker. And unfortunately for him, lost that NXT Championship again. 
it's going to be really difficult now for Sabin to secure a rematch, to be fair. He is just going to be viewed as any other contender now. So it's a long road back to the top for Chris Sabin. And that means the Tanahashi's win, where, you know, if it was a few weeks ago, it would have huge implications. But now, maybe not so much, but he is still defeating a former NXT champion. And right now, the only former NXT champion, actually, after um, NXT decided to part ways with Rick Rude recently. And I'm, I'm not going to miss him, I'll be honest. Forgot he was on this roster. Tanahashi now up on the top rope. Corkscrew sent on. Beautiful move there by Tanahashi. Imagine, just imagine already down here in NXT. Tanahashi versus Okada for the NXT Championship. How incredible will that be? And it may be on its way sooner than expected. Good God, is Saban going to be, is Saban going to lose this? Oh no, well, Tanahashi, that, uh, you know, NXT ropes are a little bit more difficult, different than, um, NJPWs, that's all I can really say. Can we edit that out? We'll edit, we'll edit that out. We'll get rid of that in post. Tanahashi mistimed that frog splash, but he's going to try it again here. Staying composed, staying in the moment. Frog splash by Tanahashi. No way is it going to be this quick of a win for the debuting Hiroshi Tanahashi. Sabin in big trouble. Middle of the ring. Can he kick out? Yes, he can. Sabin gets the shoulder up and Tanahashi's debut is not as plain sailing and as simple as he wanted it to be. That being said, Sabin is still unable to get anything going here. Tanahashi quick to counter everything. Sabin attempts. Dodging him in every corner, perhaps you could say, but there's a step up in Zagiri. There's a prelude to the future sh to the uh, cradle shock even. Cover though, right after that in Zagiri, trying to put Tanahashi away here. Not going to be enough. Tanahashi just has not taken enough moves in this matchup. Has not taken enough damage to be put to rest. Speaking of resting, Saban's doing just that. When in my opinion, he should go for the Cradle Shock right now. Because look what has happened. It's allowed Tanahashi back up to a knee. And it's allowed Tanahashi back up to his feet as a whole. Saban does a good job to reverse that. And he's going to be able to execute a Russian leg sweep here. Tanahashi unable to pull out the reversal. Sabin now primed and ready for the Cradle Shock. Can he execute it? And he's got him in. Cradle Shock by Sabin. Could this happen? There's one. Nope. Okay. It was worth a try. And Inzaguri got a two count and Tanahashi just forced his way out of that one at the count of one. Sabin raising his arm up in the air. What a counter though by Tanahashi. Saw that one incoming. And was quick to counter. Sling blade once more. And now, now he doesn't have to worry about missing it. Sabin right next to him there. Off the top. Frog splash again. This one has to end it. There it is on the replay. Quick replay as Tanahashi jumps into the cover. For one, for two. Well, oh my god. That is what makes him a former NXT champion. That is what makes him such a tough opponent to fare off against. That is what makes him the leader of the DCC as well. Sabin is just so difficult to defeat. It's just such an... But he, he's reeling there. He was reeling. Maybe that might be from the Rainmaker and certainly from everything he's taken in this matchup thus far. Sabin now with an opportunity. Oh, there's another step of Inzaguri for Tanahashi. Will he look for the cover? No, he's going to go to work on the leg here. He's going to try and stop him going to the top rope and hitting that frog splash. Sabin, you should not be taunting right now, though. This is the, the wrong move. Here we go. This is what he needs to go for. He needs to go for the cradle shock. And he's going to try for it. And Tanahashi's not going to let that one happen. Oh, well, he misses that flying forearm. He's quick to counter there. And here he comes. Incoming. Huge kick in the chest. That's all I can really say in that aspect. Tanahashi going to go up top. Are we going to see another frog splash in this one? No, it's Corkscrew sent on. What will we see? Tanahashi, Texas Cloverleaf. Or the Cloverleaf, I would assume. Just naming it naturally. Tanahashi with a submission on Sabin. 
don't think I've ever seen Saban tap out uh, since joining, the, since the whole DCC has taken shape. Trying to crawl to the ropes here. Tanahasi trying to keep this locked in despite the, how hard hitting this matchup's been. And just like the way Suicide got out of it back a heat wave, Chris Saban does exactly the same. Been learning some of the key moves of some wrestlers. Good counter there. Nice neck breaker as well to follow up by Saban. These two men are just back and forth as can be. Good counter though. Tanahashi now. Unable to capitalize. These two men are just going full blown back and forth here. Momentum truly not really on anyone's side it seems. Well okay Tanahashi went for some kind of grab there and just completely missed Chris Sabin somehow. Sent it to the other turnbuckle now. Oh, he sends him into the turnbuckle instead. And he's countered, though, by Sabin. But Sabin gets countered back by Tanahashi. Who turns him round, but gets countered by Sabin. And, oh, blow on the back sends him into the turnbuckle. This is, this is a really entertaining main event now. Sabin just all of a sudden lighting back up after those two uh, frog splashes at him. But, oh, there's a leaping crossbody by Tanahashi. Now what? Nothing apparently. He gets countered. Tanahashi counters back. What a main event this has been. And an uppercut decks him. And Tanahashi needed it. You could see it was almost a desperation uppercut as well. He needed that break. He was reeling almost from everything that had gone on. And now he can capitalize. Sling blade by Tanahashi. Is the moment opening up for him? Indeed it is. Dragon suplex by Tanahashi into the cover. There's two, there's three. Hiroshi Tanahashi makes a successful debut here on NXT. There we go. That is how you make a debut. And that is also how you have an incredible matchup that shows every strong aspect to you that there is. Congrats to Tanahashi on a truly entertaining debut. Well, there we go. NXT with its newest uh, acquisitions and one more to come next week. I'm, um, I'm hooked. I gotta tell the truth. I am hooked now to see how NXT is gonna shape up in the weeks and months to come on the road to the next takeover, which I'd assume is gonna be the night before Brooklyn. This one this one's going to be a good road to strap ourselves in for just before SummerSlam. All right, here we go. Let's get ready. Let's see how NXT is going to fare off. Great debuts tonight by P uh, Tyler, 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 Tyler Bate, uh, Ruby Riot, and Tanahashi. War Machine, though, they're going to need to fix a few things before they can think about making a, a, a plunge and a dive for those tag team titles. Well, there we go. That ends this episode of NXT. Let's see how, how Okada, Bret Hart... DCC, Nikki Cross, and the rest of the NXT brand will fare with these new arrivals. See you tomorrow for the Great American Bash. That's going to end this episode of the Universe. Thank you guys for watching. Take it, guys. And ta -ra.